Hello, time travelers. An update on the, uh, the time machine, my Nova, as it were. Look at that stuff sitting on my dash. Because so I took the steering wheel out, and I'll tell you why. I got tired of the freaking mechanics and well, mostly that tow truck guy breaking my stuff and draining the battery all the way down. I know there's something wrong with the electrical system. Don't know what, but it doesn't always fully charge. But I needed to do something so that they would quit messing and breaking with the stuff in the steering column. I'll explain. There's a steering wheel. There's my seat all a mess because I took it all out. See, stuff's not in there. What happened was this spring will not compress to put the things back together. Showing you what I mean. Spoilers. This is not what was wrong. Hey, it's just future me here filling in a little bit of context. So under there, you get the steering column and I, I replaced the turn signal switch because the old one was broken. And I replaced the start cylinder because people didn't understand that you had to have it in a certain spot and hold the gear shift a certain way to start or turn off the car. <sighs> it's like they don't know old cars. And I also changed the ignition switch, which is at the bottom of the steering column. But in order to do any of that, you have to have all this stuff off. So spring goes in first, and this green thingy goes in. And it what this actually does is catch and hit the turn signal switch when you're turning. It's so like, say you turn the right turn signal on, and then you turn right, and you turn left, it goes click, and it undoes it. And then behind that goes this thing. And this metal plate, you got to compress it a really awkward way. And I couldn't get to go down. I got it all bent out of shape, and I had to straighten it out the best that I could with vice grips. Because I was doing it wrong. More on this later. This is my look of disapproval. So I looked all over the internet and I couldn't find a replacement for the spring anywhere. Then I thought maybe if I found a friend that had a, a vise, I could use it to compress it because I think it's the spring that's not coming together. But this is too much stress for me and it was messing me up. And then after a few months of, you know, feeling like I got a kick in the pants because of the Nova situation, I got a genius idea. Or you could tell me in the comments if this is a genius idea. The idea is I put all of this back together in there without the spring. And it might not work, but that's not the point. It's to make sure that I'm putting it back together right. Yeah, because I was doing it wrong. Quick recap. This is the turn signal switch. And my old one has like split and it's now replaced. This is the start cylinder and it's been replaced. And way down there where them wires come out, Focus! Can I focus on it? Is the actual start switch. So when you turn the key, it pushes a rod and does a thingy, what's it down there? So I changed those three things and I felt real accomplished about that. And this spring goes right here. And then the green thing goes on there somehow. And then this goes on there somehow. I, 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 like that. And then a little metal ring goes in this slot and holds it down but you have to be able to compress the spring first. Apparently this is a turn signal cancel cam. And I got a new one of these because it's obviously broke off right there. You can tell in this box, see? That's supposed to be sticking out. Toss. Ooh, shiny. And I shot a video of me taking this all apart and it was gonna be in a regular, like this is how you do a thing on a Nova video but then I had to stop filming because of obvious reasons. Because I couldn't get it back together! But what I did was go on my previous video and I made screenshots of the order to put things together so I could figure out where things went and how. And this tab thing comes out at like eight o'clock about. It's hard to focus, I don't know why. And then this goes right there. With this part around there. All right. That's basically what it's supposed to look like. And then you use this tool, which is bolted there, and you tighten it here to compress it down so you can get the little clip on. It will focus. Damn it, Christmas. There, that's kind of better. Whatever, there you go. But trying to compress it down, I broke off the little wing nuts. You're supposed to be able to just do it with your hands. So I'm gonna have to use vice grips. Where are you, vice grips? You're in this scene. 
So many freaking tools. There they go. So far, so nothing. And it's still not compressing it down. It shouldn't be this hard. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to let a mechanic fix this. Spoilers. I fix it a few days later. Don't stop watching the video. This is not me giving up. This is me accepting that I don't have enough information and I don't have enough training or experience. But it might be a couple years because I don't have money right now. No mechanic's gonna wanna mess on this car if I don't also have a plan for the frame in the front getting replaced. Then I got the idea to drop the steering column down because I had to drop it down to change the start switch thingy at the bottom of the steering column. I thought, I thought maybe dropping it down would relieve pressure on the rod that goes in and out. Not, it didn't really help it in that regard, but it did get me thinking in the right direction. And I went back to working on it and I didn't have a bunch of cameras so that I could focus on what I was doing, not camera focused, but my brain focused on what I was doing and not worry about all these cameras and lighting and all that. Then when I was getting on a roll and I was figuring it out, I grabbed my gimbal so that we could film a little bit so you could see what happened. So here's a sort of demonstration. I had to yank it by pulling it this way to bring the shaft back up. This ring slides down to hold this in. But part of the problem is there's, see all these little notches or whatever's and those notches or whatever you want to call them there's not one there so you have to find the matching one in my case I put it on wrong and I think I cut a new groove into it and I only got that far but even so when I put it in the correct orientation with no spring or anything underneath the farthest down I can get it is just a little bit past this so I think it's because my steering wheel is jacked up, so I'm about to lift up my car. I meant the steering column maybe being jacked up from the car wreck, but I was wrong. It had nothing to do with that. So I lifted up the car, and I jerked this thing in and out, and it wouldn't come out anymore. So I, my next theory is that this extra groove that I cut made a bump right here, and when I'm sliding it down, it can't get past that bump. So I've got my Dremel rotary tool. What's it? Focus! and I'm gonna try grinding it down. So I was right about that part. It won't focus because I got other stuff in the way, but you can see the groove that the ring needs to fit into. I just, I just have to remember to have the ring over here so that this can hold it compressed while I put the ring on. Well, I used a flathead screwdriver to push it up over the lip. Now, let's see if we can see the satisfying part of it getting on the thing. I'm going underneath with my finger now on the bottom side. Push it a little bit. I just popped it in with my fingernail on the other side. That's it, and it's in. Now we can take this off. Of course, I have to hold this while turning that. Uh, don't take life lying down. Go out and tinker with stuff and see if you can fix it. Ooh, my steering wheel is nice and solid. It was never this solid before. Sweet. So, I fixed my steering column and all that and I have something in my steering wheel that I didn't have before check it out won't turn I didn't have steering wheel lock before as soon as I do that it lets it go but I still can't get this back without holding the thing and oh, I can't do it while holding the gimbal on it's the only camera so you can't see when I'm freaking then I do this and put it back in that position like that it locks. Just like it's bust out. You don't understand how excited I am right now. And now, this week's tech thing. This is called Artec Universal 2.4 Wireless 
and Bluetooth keyboard with touchpad. And on the back, it says model HD197. And why I love the 2.4 gigahertz is because it's got a dongle. And then in this model, it's magnetically held in this little cubby. So I don't have to deal with Windows freaking Bluetooth. I got this little keyboard for using around the house on my streaming computer when I move it around or if I need to test it on a mining rig or something else. This keyboard will pair with two Bluetooth devices as well as the 2.4 and you could switch in between with these buttons. And I did test it on my phone with Instagram. I already have a similar keyboard, the Logitech K400, which I use on my Media Center PC, and it's fine. But it has to stay there on the freaking couch because I don't want to have it in the basement or somewhere else and like go to watch TV and I don't have it. This keyboard works great, but there are a couple of setbacks when you compare it to the Logitech K400, which I'm going to go over. I like that it's rechargeable, you know, rechargeable port right there, except that if you leave it on overnight, the battery dies. The K400, you can leave it on for about a year and the battery won't die. It takes two double A's. Uh, uh, uh. The other thing is that the mouse pad is so close to the bottom that if you try to use it on your lap, there's nowhere to put your wrist and it gets a little awkward, but it works just fine on a desk. So it's going to be fine for me for what I got it for. The mouse pad could be easily moved up and these buttons made smaller, just like on the Logitech K400 and the K400 Plus. And now, toss. Enjoy this random thing. This random thing comes from my dad. And he thought about this when it popped up because the queen recently died. We all know that. Awesome person. Um, may she rest in peace. But my dad has a 1960 Cadillac and he thought this was interesting. This is a 59 Cadillac and this is when she was in Canada or United States, I can't remember. And she was in this modified Cadillac where they had the back roof replaced with glass. And there she is standing up with the glass removed. And I'm not good with celebrity names or people's names. There's too many names in my brain. I can't remember. You know, the dude. The dude that's the, the monarch right now. Because, you know, she's not there anymore. And then, them's them riding in the parade. And that's them taking it off the plane. Because apparently they flew it around. Well, isn't that cool? And now, dad joke time. My dad found this. And I saved it for a good car video. So, this is appropriate. And it says, head, shoulders, and it took me a while, knees on toes. Head, shoulders, knees on toes. Get it! And now, awkward end screen. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, how about walking around my car, my Nova, saying everything that's wrong with the body, and you can give me some thoughts, because some year, I'm going to get around to fixing it, and I'd like to know what your thoughts are about what to fix first. And whatever YouTube thinks is best, and subscribe to over here in... Yeah, thanks for watching the video all to the way to the end. And click like. Okay, bye.